Hello, welcome to this YouTube channel. Today I will discuss on the particular poem Wits and Weddings by Philip Larkin. As you can see that this particular poem falls under the group of British literature post Second World War literature and it is in your DSC T2 paper. But before going to this particular poem, let us discuss something about Philip Larkin. That means who is Philip Larkin? What are the salient features of Philip Larkin's poetry? What do we mean by the particular term movement poetry and how so far Philip Larkin is associated with the poet of the movements. Now, <clears throat> what happened, you know, that Philip Larkin was born on 9th August 1922 in Coventry and it was the place named as Warwickshire. He was educated at King Henry VIII school at Coventry and St. John's College, Oxford, from where he graduated in 1943. At Oxford, he and Kingsley Amis became close friends. Both shared an enthusiasm for traditional jazz. As you know that Kingsley Amis is very famous for his work Lucky Jim and it was published in the year 1954 and it was dedicated to Philip Larkin. After listening to a talk at the English club at Oxford by Vernon Watkins, Larkin came under the spell of WBH's poetry. That's why whenever we will go with the particular poem of Philip Larkin or the poems of Philip Larkin to be specific, we will find that in Philip Larkin's writing, there are ample references of WBH. And at the same time, when I will discuss on this particular poem that is Wits and Weddings, you will find that the basic resurgence to the romantic literature or the basic features of romantic poetry can be classified and can be found to be present in, in Wits and Weddings too. Because you will find that the stanzaic pattern of Wits and Weddings actually resembles Keats's famous odes. So such kind of Keatsian influence and at the same time it is the Keatsian influence can be traced in uh, Philip Larkin's writing obviously. Obviously with a, some, some kind of difference. The similarities are there, but the dissimilarities are too. He soon shifted his allegiance to Thomas Hardy. So you can find at one point there is Keats's influence, at another point there is the influence of W. B. H. and now it is referring to Thomas Hardy, who remains the greatest single source of inspiration in his work. The Lace Deceived, it was published in the year 1955, is an important collection of poems. His poems also appeared in New Lines in the year 1956. Robert Conquest's anthology of significant new verse of the 50s it was. His next volume of verse, The Whitson Weddings, that is our primary focus in this particular lecture. It appeared in the year 1964. High Windows, it was published in the year 1974, is his latest books of poems. Besides verse, Larkin wrote two significant and sensitive novels, Phil in 1946, which was dedicated to King Sliamis, and A Girl in Winter in 1947. By profession, Philip Larkin was a librarian, and since 1955, Larkin has been the librarian of the Brymo Jones's Library of the University of Hull. He contributes feature articles on jazz music for the London Daily Telegraph. In 1965, he was awarded the Queen's Gold Medal for Poetry and the Arts Council had Triennial Award for Poetry itself. During 1970 and 71, he was a visiting fellow of All Souls College, Oxford, and he died on 2nd December 1985. Now, Larkin is the most uh, significant poet to emerge in the 1950s. As you can see, that whenever you will go through the history of English literature of this particular period, you will find that the, the poetry of, the, of this particular period can be classified into three or four major sections. If one is being led by, that is the poets of 30s, you see, it was led by W. H. Auden, then you will find that the poets of 50s were led by Philip Larkin. And that particular pattern of poetry is considered to be the movement poetry. And there you will find that Larkin is leading the other poets 
towards their optimum level. Lurkin is the most significant poet to emerge in the 1950s. His writing is a repudiation of the obscure and cerebral verse of Eliot, that is T.S. Eliot, Ezra Pound and W.H. Auden. So ultimately, so far as the modern period or modern literature is concerned, you will find that in Lurkin's writing, we can find the basic resurgences of T.S. Eliot, of Ezra Pound, and at the same time, there is W.H. Auden, that is, the poets of 1930s, the W.H. Auden actually the pioneer in this particular group. Uh, ultimately, you will find that somehow, uh, no, I dislike such things, Pound, Picasso, Henry Moore, and James Joyce, he wrote, not because they are new but because they are irresponsible exploitation of technique in contradiction of human life as we know it. So Larkin pointed out them that the particular form of problems that are found to be present in, in these writings, I will write something different. This particular article was published in All What Zaz, it was in the page number 16 and 17. The most important of the movement poets that I have already said are mentioned, who sought to resuscitate in English poetry the virtues of intelligence and intelligibility. In his poems, Larkin presents himself in the role of a skeptical, a stranger observer of contemporary life. His verse is noteworthy for its virtues of lyrical conciseness, its sensitivity, its honesty, its clarity and its bold imagery. Now what happens, you know, that Philip Lurkins, the Whitson Weddings is one of the most widely anthologized and best known poems written in England since 1945. According to Stephen Regan, the genesis of the Whitson Weddings was a railway journey, as we will find while I was discussing on uh, the, the particular poem and the basic resurgence of the poem which Lurkin, this particular journey was taken by Philip Lurkin in July 1955. Draft of the poem was prepared in the summer of 1957, but it was not completed until October 1954. The journey was from Hull to London and clearly bears some of the autobiographical touch. Another famous poem here it was written by Philip Lurkin and like that particular poem, this poem also offers a sweeping panoramic view of the contemporary landscape and uses a journey as a way of structuring its multiple and disparate perceptions. The breadth and energy of the poem derive partly from the search for coherence and unity not only among the changing landscapes of the post-war England, but among the lives of those who dwell there. Ultimately, you will find that whenever we will discuss of this particular poem, that is, Wits and Weddings, we will find certainly that this particular poem is actually engaging a particular kind of a journey, as I have mentioned just now. But this particular kind of a journey, it doesn't mean simply a railway journey. Rather, you will find that metaphorically and symbolically, this particular journey is, ex, uh, it is, it is actually indicating towards the, the journey of Larkin's own life. And how a particular kind of a railway journey becomes the journey of one's life, that is the life of the poet, we will discuss in our next lecture. So stay attached and we will discuss this particular poem. Thank you.